big calls on all the big races. Yes, welcome back. It's another weekend edition of What a Shout, the Racing Post flagship feature weekend show. Film summer in the capital, this time on a Friday morning. Dave Orton, thrilled to be back with you in the seat. We've all got the frost covers on around us, haven't we? It's absolutely Baltic out there. What a year weather-wise we've had. You have to feel for all the racing professionals out there, and especially Cheltenham. Herculean effort to get that on. Friday on. We will go ahead assuming that Saturday will be fine. Small matter of a brilliant card in Ireland as well, isn't there? The punch is down. Could the Gold Cup winner be coming out? Gallop into Sean. Punch is down. Inspect midday Saturday. Fingers crossed for that. If not, you know they'll get it on during the week. Don't forget, of course, like and subscribe. Thumbs up. That's what it's all about. Anything on Twitter, hashtag what a shout. Share the show about. Tell your mum and dad. That's what the producers Ask me to say, or your mates and all that sort of thing. Let's get out those subscribers up there and have some fun and get your comments in below for the likes of Robbie Wilder. Let's hear them, yeah. Uh, viewers might have noticed that I'm not wearing a T-shirt. I normally do. There's been a, a new rule brought in about uh, wearing collars on the show. It, you've been asked to straighten your tie, haven't you? I mean, I notice bit, yeah. you've, you're kind of uh, doing what I'm doing I now. I pulled you're going out the quarter zip. zip. I follow in your footsteps. It's called a quarter mate. zip, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Like, uh, I knew, like, you've been tight, learning a lot like, from me. A little bit tight, but... Uh, How's the radar? Yeah. Yeah, it's all right, mate. Yeah, it's been We've got a couple of anti-post tips coming couple, up. couple, yeah. Uh, let's hope Cheltenham obviously goes ahead. It, well, I mean, today's going ahead, isn't it? So that's good news. Friday, Friday so. has passed. I mean, they have done a great effort. Let's go to yeah. Stoke. I can only imagine there's an extra cold on the fire up there, Pat Cooney. Yes, it's uh, cold enough in the summer up here, so never mind the winter. Yes, uh, yes, extra layer of clothing. I'm at Donny tomorrow as well, so... Um, Yes, I'll be wrapping up warm, that's for sure. Bobble hat and scarf and gloves, that'll be me. Yeah, really good two days at Donny as well. Excellent Saturday car, Bet365, our sponsors. All over that. We're all over you like a rash today with all the big race previews coming. We're going to Doncaster and to Cheltenham as well. It's the December Gold Cup, of course. What a lineup that promises to be. We'll be going for a super interview as ever here on What a Shout. Sussex trainer, the maestro, Gary Moore, joins me for an interview. Do not miss that. Pearls of wisdom galore, and even a couple for next week as well. Then we'll be doing those previews before the all-important weekend winners. Well, an absolute treat for you now. Then let's head down to Sussex trainer Gary Moore. Now, Gary, this is your third appearance on What A Shout. I know you're starting to love these mornings with me and our viewers. We ring you up these days. It's an absolute gimme. Well, yeah, I... <laughs> but... It's the last thing I want to do, but yeah, kick on. <laughs> our, our viewers won't believe that. Look, they're probably thinking this is the last person we want to hear from here, Dave Alton. Gary, 29 winners on the board then for this season. Uh, let's talk about 2023, if you don't mind, a little bit. Talk about the horses first. Remind me, if I'm wrong, last season, you absolutely took off, didn't you, in January and February? Um... Yeah, we, we need to again in, a, in January and February this year because uh, we had a very slow start, you know. Um, racing's been a bit of a mess anyway, isn't it? You know, with uh, the ground being so quick and uh, also the race, the low sun messing about with racing and things like that. And now we've got the frost, so, you know, like it's, it's just, I just hope the new year brings it, uh, you know, so we can just get on and, and get on with racing, you know. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, listen, you know, fingers crossed. You might think we might see, start seeing some bigger fields because of all these abandonments and, and things like that. You're quite right. Obviously, the festive period comes up, as I mentioned. You've already had your Christmas present, I suppose, with Josh coming home. Lots has been said about that, Gary, um, this year. We've covered it at the Racing Post as well as anyone else. Peter Thomas got a word with you, I saw, in the week as well. Um, you're all set for a nice Christmas then, thank God. Yeah, that's right. Uh, at least we'll have Josh with us. Which is definitely a bonus, and um, yeah, it's you know just an amazing recovery, and you can't believe how pleased we are to have him back. And of course, it was that Saturday uh, in the Coral Hurdle where Goshen, no Constitution Hill, he took care of business, didn't he? Again, and I, I don't know what it is, uh, Gary. I said this to you just before we came on. We can just print the name Goshen on the front of the paper, and it would sell more copies than as if we had Tom Segal or Paul Keeley on it. Yeah, he, he kind of saved the day a little bit, though, because uh, there was no um, the good chaser of Alan King's. He didn't run. Obviously, Constitution Hill didn't run, and there was another good horse that should have run that day, and he didn't run either. So he, he kind of saved the day for Ascot a little bit that day, I think. You know? 
That was long press, wasn't it, of course? And they all came out a week later. What did you make of that? Did you think the industry, like us, the media, I don't know, um, certain racing officials took it a little bit seriously? I mean, that's got, got called out a bit, Gary, didn't it, with its ground? Yeah, I, you know, like, like I said before, I ran seven horses there over the two days. One ran in a three-mile chase where the chase track was definitely quicker than the hurdle track. He'd had tendon problem before. He won the race. And he's come back 100% settled, you know. So I, I think people got a little bit nervous of running their horses sometimes, you know. Mm, Ascot will be sending you a figgy pudding for Christmas after that. I think there's been a lot of bad publicity about that. So good to know all still well there. Certainly one of your tra favourite tracks. And of course, that day later on, Botox Haas went and won as well. That valuable Haydock handicap. They're both in the long walk, Gary. Uh, maybe this is what Goshen's always want, is it? Three miles. Well, everybody was telling me that that's what he wants. I don't agree with him. Um, there's, 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 not, there's not a lot of... But I mean, he can run over a mile and a half on the flat. So, yeah, he might be slow, I don't know. But if he wants to be quick, he can be. Um, he, won, he, won, he, won, uh, he won a hurdle race at Wing Canton the other, back in the last season. And you need to be quick to go around there, you know. Um, so uh, he, he definitely looked like he'd stay a bit further when he won the other day at Ascot, but I don't think that was the greatest race in the world, to be honest with you. Um, so, but it's worth a try. It's very limited what he can do. He's not getting his ground. I want to go back over fencing with him, but I won't do it until he gets proper soft ground. You know? um, so, uh, you know, like, if it, like if it could be a problem looking at the full pass next Saturday at Ascot. You know, it might just be the same ground as what they raced on the other day. Yeah, it might well be, absolutely. And let's hope it's all long, because next week, I'll tell you what, they're talking about it being Siberian Baltic weather, aren't they? Let's have a, a word, if you don't mind, about some other horses that people are getting excited about, uh, Garrett Yard, and quick horses. I mean, do they come much quicker over hurdles at the moment than the novice authorised speed? That was a whoosh again at Sandown, wasn't it? Yeah, he, 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 he's a very talented horse, you know. Um, ground was probably not... It would have been better if it had rain on it. It was uh, it was dead old ground, you know, and you probably didn't see him quite at his best there. Um, I think he's a very talented horse. He didn't jump as well as he did at Linfield, and I hope that was the ground was the reason of that, you know. But um, um, you know, like he, he is, he, I, you know, I think the world of him. I'm glad we got him, you know. Well, of course, we saw in the champion bumper what he was all about. And it, if anything, he looked like he's maturing. The more he, When he starts to settle down that horse, he could be an absolute missile. And they really like the second of Henderson's, I think, don't they? Let's. Um, so will it be Tolworth for him, ground allowing? Yeah, that's, that's, that's the idea. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Talking about yeah. Lingfield, you had another missile that came out, this time a point-to-point -point graduate. Um, is it um, Ashley Headsource, a Gavega? Absolute right. hose-up job, this one. Yeah, he's, he's another proper horse, you know. Um, I, I, I've always thought the world of him. The owner's been amazingly good and very patient with him because he's had him two years and he'd never seen him run until the other day. Um, I've always thought he was a very good horse uh, and he, 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 he could be anything, you know, he really could be anything. I think ground, he probably would be more ground dependent than what the other fellow would. He, he's got quite a, a lot of knee action and a strange action, he, 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 you know. So um, he, he would be one... Probably, he's probably a better jumper than what authorised speed would be. Two horses that are going to give you a lot of fun, hopefully. And uh, I don't know, who knows, maybe another grade one success before the season is out. Let's look more pressing matters ahead then, Gary. Um, and I know you're on the clock. Hopefully, Cheltenham makes the freeze. Uh, I'm talking to you on, on Friday morning. You've got a couple of runners there. This show will be out after that. Hopefully, Nassalam and uh, the very unexposed ex-French horse, Le Patron, going to do you some cheers there. But tomorrow in the 205 in the juvenile race, you've got Perseus Way, second at the track last time, went to Leicester in a Mickey Mouse race, but looked again like a horse that was really ready to show what he's all about. Yeah, he, 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 you know, look, he did win Leicester. But I think it was a donkey race, if I'll be honest with you, you know. Um, and if he hadn't won like that, you'd have probably put him in the sale or something, you know, because, you know, like he, um, I don't think they were very good. Um, I know, I know there was something in the race that was fancy, um, but uh, that didn't really look like to, to jump in. This is a really big horse, big, you know, like he it's typically looks like a jumper, but he, he, he's jumping, isn't he? He's seen the stars and they're, they're not known for their jumping, you know, uh, being good at their jump. 
but it, we've done plenty more schooling with him. And um, if he can brush up his jumping, then I think he's got every chance tomorrow. He's an interesting horse because he came from Owen Burrows, of course. He won't mind the good ground, will he? And what are we thinking with him then tomorrow? Is he like? Are you expecting him to be banged out at the last? I am, yeah, definitely, yeah. Looking at the race, it's it's not much stronger than the one he ran second in before. He's, I know he's taken on script writer at this time, but um, hopefully with a bit better luck in running, we're giving more of a punch up on what we did last time, you know. Yeah, there you go. All right, well, we'll all look forward to seeing that. We're all looking forward to seeing editor Jajit coming out. You bowled a massive curveball on his return because we were all hoping he was going to be the pace in the race, you know, us that write about these things and try and preview them. And, and, and there he is held up and running on as an eye catcher at the back. What was all that about? Well, I had to try and do something different. I think they after, the handicapper half accused me of stopping him, which was absolute rubbish um, because he had, he had top weight that day. And, you know, like the first time out, I didn't really want to cut his throat and set it up for the rest of them, you know. And uh, we're probably more likely riding the same tomorrow. You know, I'll basically give Nala a free hand on what he does, but um, I wouldn't be in a rush to make the run with him again, you know. Uh, probably see a bit of handy at this time, that's all. I think there is a bit of pace in the race looking at it tomorrow. Prince Eskalus can get on it and a couple of others. We wish you well with him. He's a little bit higher than when winning it last year. But I guarantee you he's going to be popular. That's it for Saturday then. Now, it's a festive time of year. It would be remiss of me not to try and eke one out, Christmas present-wise, for our viewers. I've been looking down your entries. You've got some fascinating horses. Should we just talk about the Welsh National quickly, Gary? You've got two in there. Full back, of course. Not sure what went wrong at, at uh, Fulton. Um, Fontwell, sorry, last time. He... Um, he didn't really look like he was enjoying himself at any stage. No, he, he, he travelled well, too well for a circuit and a half. And then I don't think he, the track suited him, really, to be quite honest. He, he's a big galloping horse, you know, and he was you're going uphill, down, down, and round corners and too many. Uh, it didn't really pay into his strengths. It, I, thought, I thought it really cut out um, after two circuits. I thought he's obviously bled, but he, he was scoped after the race. He didn't bleed. Um, so um, we've, 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 trained him, we've trained him slightly different since he's come back and I just hope that pays dividends, you know, because, uh, and also the ground, the ground in Fontwell this year, it's been more good than it has anything else, you know, um, which is unusual for that place this time of year. I mean, if it's good at Chepstow at Welsh National time, then we really need to wobble our heads with what's going on in the world, don't we? You've got move the chains in there as well. I mean, this guy's quickly going up. The question is, have you got him high enough in the handicap? Well, maybe not. You know, um, if it, it wouldn't be the end of the world if he didn't get in anyway. There's plenty of other races for him. But he, he's very ground dependent too. He, you know, he, he does need proper soft ground. Gary, just a thumbs up to this one. I reckon you're going to have a double next week if it's all on. Hadex uh, de Zobo? Or... Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't put you off him, you know. Like, he... he, he, he I, I thought he'd win first time out and, and he bumped into Boot Hill. And then I, I, I thought he ran all right the other day, but it's something that went amiss somewhere. Um, and uh, I, 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 I haven't really had a look at the wing Canton race to see how strong it is, but... Um, he, he, does, he does want, he, he's one also does want nice ground and uh, just only just two miles, you know, like he's got, he's got quite a lot of pace. Yeah, he certainly um, has. He, 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 might, he, he might not go there because there's another race. He, he could go to Kempton on Boxing Day. And in some very famous colours at Wing Canton as well. But about Poncho, who's, he, he's caught my eye. I think I wrote up his close up comments in the post for his bumper latest when he might have just bumped into one, I think. Yeah, I, I believe so. You know, he's a horse we like a lot. Um, I've been dying to get him over. You know, like uh, bumpers. You don't know what you're taking on. Um, he's he touched wood and whistle. He scores very well, and uh, he's been working good. So hopefully, he's got every chance. The future looks bright, and Gary, um, listen, I know you enjoy these more than you let on. You, th I think we were going to have ten minutes. We've definitely gone over, and I get the sense that I'm letting you off lightly here, aren't I? <laughs> Yeah, you are. Yeah, it's very good of you. I appreciate it. Yeah, right, listen, I'm a good man. <laughs> All right, so for myself, Dave Orson, the Racing Post, and everyone here at, at What A Shout, hope the family have a great Christmas, Gary. It's great you're all back together. Honestly, it's been a great story that this, this year, and all the best for 2023. Thank you very much. Cheers.
Well, it's that festive time of year and we're feeling very generous out there. Why not? It's the uh, Members Club offer that continues to slide here at the Racing Post. 50% off your first three months. OK, now's the time to get involved, guys. All that brilliant racing that's coming up over the festive periods of Stevens Day at Leperstown. Absolutely unmissable for Kempton as well. Get involved. You've got everything there. Follow the link in the video description. There you go, then. It's always fun with Gary. Pat, uh, old guard of the game. Bit like yourself. Yes, good trainer, isn't it? Ian Spee at flat hurdles, chases, just a, a guy who knows the time of day and does very well with whatever he gets. Remember, he, with Goshen, he won, I think he won off the mark in the 50s on the flat. So he knows what he's doing and a good trainer and a good person as well, as indeed the whole family are, I think uh, it would be fair to say. Absolutely, the goodwill's there as well. Authorised speed? Yeah, a lot of what I've seen from him in the season. Yeah, it looks much better as a hurdler. The, the bumper the sexy good at bumpers novices well, are coming out now, aren't they? Yeah, about time. Yeah, I like that uh, lossy mouth. One Reel them day. off. Yeah, Reel lossy them off. Mouth. They're up there, aren't they? Lossy mouth and jet power, the big two at the moment. But uh, yeah, early enough days, isn't it? And Fassol, we saw last weekend oh, as well. Yeah, of course, yeah. I mean, I mean it was uh, a funny pe old people race. Getting, people getting way carried away with Fassol. Yeah, I want to go to Pat about me. this. Let's have a bit of Fassol Vega chat, shall we, here on, on What A Shout. Uh, one to nine last week, Patrick, about... Half a mile slower than the preceding division. Very good horse one on that card, of course, looking there of Paul Nolan's. And yet, here we are, all of a sudden, around about, what, five to four for the Supreme? That's right. And he is featuring a lot of multiples. And uh, you look at that day one, you've got Constitution Hill, Basil Vega, John Bond might be odds on soon enough. So you're going to have that sort of sexy good thing treble on the opening day, I think. With Basil Vega, well, that... It's the bumper form, isn't it? That bumper form is absolutely red hot. It was probably one of the best bumpers in recent years. And they've all come out and done well in their novice hurdle campaigns thus far, those we've seen. So is he a bargain? Not for me. Will he be odds on on the day? Quite possibly. So, um, yeah, I, we keep laying him in multiple. So the punters obviously think he's, uh, he's a fair price. Can we just get your hands together? Warm your hands for Pat. Do you know why? Why? The f he's always the first, Pat. All right, OK, this is why we love Pat Cooney. He's the first to mention the killer multiple <laughs> on day one. We, they, punters just absolutely love that opening day multiple. They shouldn't be loving it this early, though. Well, they, they, do, just, just, they do. And he's just said it. Yeah. And the Constitution, long odds yeah. on. Likely Fasal Vega, unless something comes out. I mean, if he wins again at Christmas, he definitely goes odds on for that. Yeah. Odds on for the Supreme. We've been used to it being a 7-2 race recently at around about Christmas time. And, of course, Jean Bon, who might come out. So Jean. there's your treble. And do you know what he did last week? What did he do? He called the shooting of Bambi's mother. Excuse, excuse because me. Because he, he said now's the time to get Honeysuckle beaten. Yeah. I mean, he, he was proved right, wasn't he? That she didn't was, run a bad race, did she? No, nah, it was still a good race. Uh, I mean, she there was always that concern. She never faced a horse as good as Classical Dream. And I don't, like, I've always really rated Tiapu when he's on. Do you Debbie. think he's a stayers hurdle candidate? Tiapu. Tiapu. Uh... Uh, it depends what way they want to go. But I, I think he just needs soft heavy and he's not necessarily going to get that at Cheltenham. Oh, so Robert they're going to have to disagree with that. Would he? Yeah, he thinks, it, he, he thinks the ground won against him at Cheltenham. I wonder whether he might be a deep winter horse. That's, no, no, that's, exactly, that's literally what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Well, not, yeah. Not, well, okay, so not I'd spring horse is what I mean. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, okay. They just have to pick and choose. Wouldn't it be like Graham Robbo to be wrong with it? Oh, he's been wrong with a few things, hasn't he? Amen. Right, OK, let's move on with the show, shall we? Brilliant to have Gary. Let's get these previews underway on Saturday then, Pat. And it is a big day for you. You're on the Talmore. Yeah, absolutely. We sponsor all seven races at the card at Doncaster. I was there for this meeting a year ago, and it was a good crowd and a good atmosphere, so we hope it's on. And it's going to be good ground, and this 12.20 is an intriguing race, a Mayor's Handicap Hurdle. It was won last year by Midnight Mary when trained by Stuart Edmonds, who's now trained by Lucy Wadham. So I presume she would have been mapped out for this race. Just a tricky race. There's lots in the race with chances. Uh, Stuart Edmonds is also running one at the bottom there. Uh, Dwarin, I think you pronounce it, that would have some sort of a chance. But the two, I think, that would probably be heading the market would be Miss Milano uh, of Mickey Richards and Ray Deschamps of Rose Dobbin. Now, Miss Milano, she won when we sponsored our Charlie Hall ch uh, chase meeting. And she won well there. Excellent Irish rider, this Connor Rabbit, claiming seven. Connor rode this mare when she won at Weatherby. She won of 99. The partnership was renewed next time out. She won off 104 in good style. And she's now 108. Now, I know Nicky Richards rates the jockey very, very highly. So he's excellent value for the seven. Going to be a leading player. I like Ray Deschamps of Rose Dobbin. This is a horse who, when, they, when she was running over two miles, she looked like she wanted further. She ran okay on her reappearance over two and a half. 
and they've wasted no time at all stepping her up to three for this uh, this uh, series qualifier. So she can improve, probably improve again. So I like Ray the Sharp, but you can leave half a dozen of these in with decent claims. You found one there, Patrice. I like Ray Deschamps as well. If you watch back that comeback run, it screamed of Alls that wants a little bit further. Have you been watching the rabbit up north? Oh, uh, yeah, he's doing all right, hasn't he? Yeah, lots of people talking about Got to be Connor. some decent puns there for headlines and stuff. Going to be fav. What do you like in this? Yeah, uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a huge fan of the race. Um, I mean, it's, it's competitive, isn't it? It's not one you normally expect to be on the telly. Do you remember Lady Buttons? Yeah, I do. Yeah, it wasn't just before your time. That wasn't. Yeah. She was the Northern Queen, wasn't she? She was. Uh, I don't know if we've got another Northern Queen in here, but uh, I mean, there, there's a, there's quite a few sort of five year olds that look quite unexposed and interesting. I just thought uh, maybe Dwarine for the same connections that won it last year. Uh, decent comeback at Fakenham, nearly won first try over a staying trip. Should be a bit more to come. And uh, she's looking at the early market. She'll probably be slightly bigger than a couple. So. But yeah, it's quite quite a uh, one to tread carefully in. You owe Pat a Christmas card, don't you, for getting that pronunciation before you you you, you literally copied it phonetically perfectly. Dwarine. Uh, that's is one thing I going. can do, pronounce things correctly. Yes, well, all right, okay, I'll you. give you that. Talking about being correct, I tell you what, Pat Cooney, twelve fifty five. We're looking forward to this. The light. This is the. Uh, I had to. I nearly said the lightning. Of course, that's two miles. We're going up to three miles. The December novice chase. It's Grade Two. It's one of the highlights on the card. And how many runners have we got? It's a novice chase. Hang on a minute. Shake your eyes. Yeah, there's eight, eight, eight as, as we speak at the moment, and pretty tough race this one. Uh, Bella Trixa, I think, is interesting. Venetia Williams, last time we saw this one, he was winning at Chester on the flat. So very significant Venetia uh, sends a five-year-old chase debut in a race like this over the three miles. That I think might be on course to be favourite, but tricky race. You know, you can look at them. I, I ended up looking at Jet Plane's last win at Hereford. And I wouldn't say I would have been a Jet Plane fan prior to that win, but he was pretty spectacular that day. And the improvement came about because he was running over three miles for the first time. So he's back at that three miles again on Saturday. Bridget Andrews uh, booked to ride. And I would imagine if that version of uh, Jet Plane turns up again, he might just be the one here. But uh, tricky race. You can leave a few of these in. Uh, Marla Misher is interesting. Lock Dirk Rocco is a bit interesting. Maybe he was flattered, though, by his second to that good horse of uh, Paul Nichols at Weatherby last time because the winner was idling in front for most of the trip. But it was still a good race. Brian Hughes aboard, so he's going to be popular as well. But I just think the jet plane, the Hereford version, uh, will do for me. Skelton on a Saturday has been the big thing, hasn't it? I think they're going for four in a row for a big one. Uh, and Pat's hoping that takes off. All right, uh, I'm hoping that Lost Erg Rocco isn't flattered by that Weatherby run. This guy, they've always thought the world of... He was never going to be a novice hurdler. He actually did quite well over hurdles. He's rated 1-2-1. He's got Brian Hughes on him. It's Laura Morgan. I mean, if Marla Mission runs to 140, which he's capable of, and he has one here at, at Doncaster World, this is likely five guys for John McConnell, who always seems to get a big winner when he comes over to Britain, Daryl Jacob on, then we're probably playing for places. But you can back a place here, and Lofto Rocco, if he, he just builds on that run against uh, Gilino Bello last night, Weatherby, he looked like he had him on the run. He's yeah. massive, this horse, yeah. and I love him. Yeah, I like, yeah, he's my selection as well. I was oh. having iron between him and Jet Plane. Uh, I mean, Jet, Jet Plane, he wasn't even mentioned in a Dan Skelton stable tour, so I was trying to find out what Skelton might say, but that was a really good effort uh, on his chasing day. He beat Kintara, who's a horse I thought was very well handicapped. Is that the Bailey horse? Yeah, mm. um, and Kintara beat the third by a fair distance as well. So he's obviously surprised them. Uh, yeah, I like this race, though. I think well, Marlon Mission was pretty poor at Cheltenham on that. On that chasing star sub. It's just if you go back to that complete unknown form when he beat him over novice hurdle, yeah. he, he looked he always looked like a chasing mate. Doesn't always work out, of course, does it? No. They, they no, can it doesn't. stay there. They didn't with the hurdling, a John, right? another John McConnell horse, um, the streets of Doyle. Oh yeah, no, 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 it wasn't. No. What was the one that everyone was getting used? To? Oh, the yeah, it was the uh, Albert Barden, Barden Bardenstown lads. You got it. Okay, so I mean, I don't want to get carried away with that. Uh, Bella Trixer and um, Gentleman Arms chasing Davytons, not really. Bread for I'd be disappointed if really Bred for fences, beat Lotto Rocco. So I think, I think the two to be interested in are Jet Plane and Lotto de Rocco, partly for the reasons you explained as well about Lotto de Rocco. Good. Nearly beat Gelino Bello. Do you know Bello's come out and won since? I know they've basically been matches, haven't they? But I mean, it could, it could be flattered. That's the fear. If he was but, idling at Weatherby last time, he certainly wasn't doing that at Exeter. And there is a lot of talk about you know yeah. that horse being one of Paul's better novice chases for Cheltenham coming up. So we're Rocco and rolling, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, let's go Rocco, yeah. Rocco and rolling here then. Shall we go down to Presbury Park then? Fingers crossed, Cheltenham once again making a Herculean effort. Love that. Herculean effort, I'm going to say it loads. Herculean effort. 
tomorrow, Pat, and they get this on because the 115 looks like another belter. Won by Edith Jajit last year. He's a couple of pounds higher in the weights. He caught us all out a little bit the, at the last meeting, at the November meeting when they held him up. We've heard from Gary about that. He's a handicapper. I even thought he might have been mucking him about, but he just tried something new. Now, Gary said he won't be leading tomorrow necessarily. There is pace in the race. How do you see it going? Yeah, I think the likely pacemakers are Prince Aeschylus and the Widowmaker, but it uh, wouldn't be a surprise if Editor Tajit was simply too fast for them and maybe he'll find in front at an early stage. He's going to be very solid in the market. He's got a good record at Cheltenham. And he's going to be very easy to find in the market. I'm sure he's going to be a popular horse with the punters. Uh, but I think it's a deep old race. There's some of these horses on, on, on their best lines of forms. I think they can serve it up to Editor. You've got Gumball, who was a little bit disappointed last time, but he's got some good lines of form. Time White and Dollars, maybe they're better at different tracks, Ascot and Sandown, perhaps. Um, so it's an intriguing race. The one I keep coming back to thinking he could be value is third time lucky. We've already mentioned Dan Skelton on a Saturday. Uh, but, you know, this horse was second to Edward Stone at Warwick uh, back in February. And that was, I think he was rated 153. Yes, possibly a little bit disappointing. He's now 147, though. This is his first run since a wind up. So I can just about make him the best handicapped horse in the race. So third time lucky for me as a value alternative to uh, a well, well supported top weight, I should think. Hardly went a yard in the Holden Gold Cup, did he? But he has had his wind operated on since, mm. holding him up off of strong pace is something they've always wanted to do. And we're going to see him tomorrow. I like Editor. I think this is probably... Uh, he was potentially going to go in the Schleur chase, wasn't he? Editor yeah. He, he's yeah, a right classy... Right. I think if he gets out in front, I don't know if Prince Eskalus can go with him. Gumball just always... He's a health and a wealth warning, isn't he? Yeah, he's he just over, always overrated one. in the market sometimes quite a bit. Yeah, he's, oh, don't get me wrong, definitely handicapped to win, and he was right old gambler at Ascot yeah. last time, but just something at the business end puts me off him. I think this will be a May call, hopefully, from Editor, and uh, repeat the win. I actually think the best handicapped horse in the race is the Widowmaker, potentially, of 135. But I think <sighs> needs soft ground. Does it? I was a bit underwhelmed with him at, at, least. at Newbury last time. No, I was as well. I thought he was going to build on the Chepper's run. But I mean, that extra run last season was really good. He's finished. He's not been beaten far by Pick, Pick Dory in the Grade One at Aintree. He's off one three five, but I think he does need softer ground. I agree, with Pat. Third time lucky. Um, I mean, yeah, he's been a bit. He was flat in the Hall and Gold Cup and at Ascot. But flat. He's at, flat. He was. I mean, pancakes don't come flatter than that. All oh, right. Well, you do. You do agree with me though, yeah. It was flat. I would go harsher than that. Would he you? looked like a horse that had had enough of it. All game. right, but let's look at it. Right, he's had wind surgery now and. Uh, you know, that seemed to... He had it last, similar time last this season. Is, and this is the time out. to give him another chance then. Yeah, exactly. He bounced out after winning so last season, one by miles at Cheltenham. Two from two at Cheltenham on the fences. His best runs came at Cheltenham as a hurdler. Mm. Um, and he's down to 147. Like, I, I think he is pretty well handicapped. I think I, I could see him bouncing back, back here. It's like the key thing is back at Cheltenham and the wind yeah. surgery. And, and of course, Edward Stone showed that that second season form might yeah. be a bit tastier than some people. And expected. brave, brave Seska as well. Brave Shashka. Shashka. Uh, I thought Blue Lord was pretty your thing. well. Sheesh. No, Shishka. <laughs> yeah. That all needs to get verified. But uh, brave Shashka. I, I'm just saying, uh, last season two more novices. Uh, let's not give up on them. Because that one a decent handicap at Aintree, of course, last Saturday. All right, Pat, talking about decent handicaps. It's a follow-on for the Paddy Barrow Cold Cup. It's the December Gold Cup. They all go on this circuit, don't they? Like we see on the flat with the seven furlong handicaps at Ascot, they always mention all that sort of thing. You get to know your horses. You see what sort of conditions they want. You think, next time, next time. Have you got one in the 150? Well, it's been a fascinating market, this one. Il Rodoto of uh, Paul Nichols is the current favourite. And... I've never really been a fan of the horse. I never seem to think that he used to finish his races strongly. But I, I, I take it all back because I thought he ran very, very well on his reappearance in the, uh, the the race that we all look at as the form line to, to, to pick and choose from for this race. And I thought he did hit the line hard. So he's had that wind up. This is his second run since the wind up. So that version puts him bang there with a leading claim. He would have been a bit nearer if he jumped the last. That being said, I don't think he's a bargain round about five to one got stolen silver who continued to be popular in the market that actually went off favorite for that race at Cheltenham and uh, I think it came back lame so we can forgive that one I'm, I'm, I'm mulling over two here uh, I'd like Frero Bamboo of Venetia Williams you're never going to be far away back in Venetia in a big handicap on a Saturday I think this one's interesting because he hasn't gone over this trip before all his form is over two and it looks as though the two and a half might suit him well but I didn't really want to find out you know, this time around, would I'd like to see if he does stay and then back him again in future races over the trip. 
So I've ended up with Coconut Splash, and this is a horse. He, he, he's yet to win over fences. He's not from seven, but there's some very good runs, and he made his reappearance at Weatherby on our Charlie Hall chase meeting, and he was third to Overdrive. Now, Overdrive's a quite a talented horse. He's actually come out and finished second to Long Press at uh, where, wherever it was, at Newcastle last time out. So that, that's a solid-looking line of form. Evan Williams in these handicaps, you can always, you know, he normally maps them out for him. I think Coconut Splash has got this sort of progressive profile. I think the public could latch onto him in the, uh, from an each way angle as well. And I think at double figure prices, he'll do for me. Evan, of course, knows how to win these races. Yeah, it's that sort of race, Pat. You look down and you think, hang on a minute, he hasn't won for a long time. And then you look at some of the form lines and they're all there, aren't they? And uh, he certainly looks like he's been nibbled at in the 365 market as well. Uh, now, I, I'm going to sit back and let you do your thing because this is where the anti postman has been in print this week. Oh, yes. Well, I'm not necessarily in print, in email, but... I mean, this I mean <laughs> sorry, mate, I've just completely mugged you off for no reason. Well, yeah, that happens on a to, daily basis. You're trying to do that to me, to be fair. Well, uh, it, it was print, isn't it? All right, you've been mate. digitally... <laughs> it's not a tangible piece that you can hold, but it's there. It's email to subscribers, yeah. Right, Il Rodoto, uh, like the horse, similar profile. Have you put him up, Il Rodoto? No, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just a bit easing you in, yeah. Okay. I'm saying Sorry. Sorry. Like the horse, Sit back. Don't like the price. Uh, similar profile to a couple of Paul Nichols' winners and recent Surely years. they're going to he hold on to young... him for longer this time. Surely. 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 About. Um, <laughs> yeah, just, I, I don't really like going That's in. That's holding and... range, you thought, buffoon. What yeah, do you think I'm, I'm doing? I just imagine all sorts of things when you go like that. <laughs> okay. um, I just don't really like to go in at 9 to 2, 4 to 1 in a race like this. Why not? Uh, because... If the horse places, you're losing money. Because so, you want to back horse each way in this race. Yeah, exactly. Right. And I've done that twice. Uh, Warlord, the first one. I mean, uh, this it requires a remarkable leap of faith because he was almost worse than third time lucky in the Olden yeah, Gold it's Cup. It's a trip, though, isn't it? Is it? Two mile four. Oh, yeah. He was beaten after a fence. Yeah, but that was. I see the back. Class. First time out form, isn't it? Like, I'm not. I'm not reading too much into that. I'm not having I mean, that. The profile is similar to Eldrado Allen, really. Staying over two mainly as a novice, I think he's going to get better the further he goes. Okay. Um, and the other one's fantastic lady. Caught me by surprise a little bit. Hmm. Um, pretty one of the most Why? unexposed one. Sorry. Why has it caught you by surprise? What she did to Zambella uh, on a the seasonal return. Zambella's like uh. one of the best mares around. Come out and smashed uh, Rivier de Tell since after Fantastic Lady. That didn't beat turn up, though, the Elliot Mayer at Carlisle. Yeah, that's poor. Yeah, it didn't find anything. That was that's but I, I just always think Zambella is a really good yardstick in that division. And uh, I know Henderson said he was going to keep Fantastic Lady to sort of Mayer's company. So he's obviously aiming a bit higher now. Her jumping um, will worry me. Would it? Yes, it would. Around here. These are different fences for her. And um, mm, that, that would worry me. But uh, it, uh, yeah, she's progressive. Uh, she's endo. Yeah, it's, I think it's probably quite unusual he's putting a, a mare in this kind of kind of race when he could have just, you know, nicked some like black type going in small field mares chases. Oh, I wonder how many of these type of horses Henderson's got. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure, but yeah, uh, yeah, okay. I thought they, they were the two, but uh, it is open. It is open. Pat has mentioned the winner of this race, Ferrero Bamboo. Not sure they got the tactics right at Ascot last time. They knew he needed a stiffer trip. I don't know whether it's lack of two mile four. Handicaps for him, Pat, but it, it, he is crying out for this sort of stiffer test. He's, he's what I would have done as a sand down also for an Ascot horse because it's that, 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 that bit more testing, which is where he's won, of course. The ground is something of an unknown for him. Of course, Midnight River's come out, you know, who was the anti post favourite and placing the Paddy Barrel Cog Cup for the Skeletons because I think they are expecting it to be lively. It could just help him first time over the trip, and Charlie Deutsch is the man to have on the side. The other one, and he is a bit of a thief, is Fugitive who hung all over the shop last time over two miles, but crying out for this return to further. And he's interesting for the Hobsons and Keelan Woods. They're my two against the field. But we must move on. The 225 comes up next. It's the international, Pat, and something of a potential changing of the guards coming up. Or are we looking at a good thing? Yeah, I keep changing my mind on this. I think with Epitant, she's probably the, you know, going plan B for the rest of the season now, isn't she? She normally rocks up at... Uh, Kempton on Boxing Day, but with Constitution Hill around, he seems to be getting the, the star treatment, and she's ended up in this race for the first time. I, I, I keep thinking, I suppose she'll win, but then you look at I like to move. He, he won the great one under top weight. That's a good line of form. Nappers Hill has been a revelation, hasn't he, so far? And he was particularly impressive at Wing Canton, but he has got the penalty for that win, and I think that might be tough for him. First Street, I think, is just. I think he's more than a handicapper as well, so I'm going to leave him with a claim as well. 
But on balance, if you said to me who's the best at the weights, it's Epa Tant. She's going to be round about six to four. And I think that she'll split opinions, really. A lot of people will say, yeah, but she was well beaten at uh, Newcastle in the fighting fifth. But the fact is, she's OK round here, isn't she? She's got uh, a lot in her favour. So on balance, I would say likely win a yes. But would I be back in a no? I think I'd watch this race because I can certainly leave Napa's first street and I like to move it all in with decent claims. I thought that was a good thing in this race, but perhaps... Did uh, you? I, yeah. I, I think this is wide open. Mm, why? Uh, I just I just think the four, there's not much between So you're not going them. anywhere near Epiton and nah, White? No, no, no. I thought uh, First Street was... Because because I think any four of those can win it, I, I, and First Street's by far the biggest. I think he's the one. He's caught I mean, between a rock and a hard place, I reckon, now. Do you reckon? I do. Well, because he... Well, because he's rated 150 now. He's just that's, uh, you can't win a bet for it off that unless you uh, are, you know, unless you are, champ, you know, I don't think he's champion level class. So I'm, no, I'm but I don't think I don't really think any of these are at the moment. Can't work but that out doesn't mean that's street. not a good grade two, and they could all get better because they're all young horses. Yeah. Can't work out whether he wanted it because the mare that pushed him all the way was getting a lot of weight off him. And I'm not totally sure how good she is. I mean, I think that Paul will be confident of beating him in Napa's Hill knowing that Grivatana went close to him last time mm. uh, he's coming out quite quickly as well after his return isn't he uh, first street I'd put line through him Epiton she ran to 153 last time didn't she which she's getting £5 for my light to move it I'm not sure that's going to be enough mm. uh, you think I like to move it's a good thing I think I, mean, I think that I like to move it this is his time of year it was hard not to be impressed with him in the oh that was a great performance yeah. he was, to, he's a powerful to individual. be fair I would agree that that was more impressive than first streaks weight carrying performance and that was in a bigger a better race than he won by further yeah. But uh, I just he ticks all the boxes too me. short. I've, this is a, a puzzle, I think. But the one I, I wouldn't like is the one I hope doesn't win is Epiton, because I, 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 it would be nice that there's a bit of a change in the guard, and one of these young horses ends up being very, very good. I get that. They I all, think they're, 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 those three could all be 160 like very soon. I get. I think, think you're you've basically summed up what the public will be thinking. There'll be lots of people looking at Epiton and going, get five pounds and why not to move it? Yeah. Handicap this, is, this is constitutional ill form. This is a good thing. Yeah. Um, well, there will there'll be a lot of people that are like, well, I think there are improvers in here and they're going to show their metal. I'm thinking it's I like to move it. Those are your Saturday previews. Let us know what you like. Will you be moving it in the international? Right then. It's nearly that all-important time of the show. Nearly nat winners. But first, a reminder that uh, Racing's best app just got even better. You can download it, of course, for free, the Racing Post app on the Google Play Store or the App Store. All daily tips and what a star tipping lineup. Wilders is in there somewhere. Kills, of course, and Tom Siegel will be giving you all the stuff this weekend, all the members club <laughs> action there for you as well. We're building on it. 2023 is going to be a big year for the app. Get involved. All right, nap time. Come on in, Pat. Let's give you the floor. We gave you a round of applause earlier. Let's hope you're going to brief us another winner. Well, I'm going for Cheltenham, the 335, the lucky last. Nina the Terrier, Alan King, uh, fifth in the Great Wood, ran quite well for a long way, I thought. I actually think she's a, thought that day she's a well handicapped mare off a 131. Well, she's now off a 130, so I should be fancying her a bit. I thought she would have won at Weatherby when she fell behind Molly Zolly's uh, wishes. Um, and she's got form on good ground. She's well handicapped. Um, I just like her. Every time she runs, I give her a chance. But I think tomorrow the race sets up very well for her. And she'll be around about a five or six to one. So uh, Nina the Terrier in the finale at Chelts. She gets a lot of coverage on the show, Nina. Yeah, yeah I like Nina, yeah. Do, you do as well, Yeah, I put you? her up for the Greatwood, yeah. I, I see what Pat's saying there. Yeah, she. it for looks sure. like this might be her race. I, I agree, 335. Yeah. And Pat might have nicked one there. I, I, I like tomorrow's racing. I like it. There's like it, three or four yeah, of them. Yeah, I prefer about. this to Friday's for sure. Nap for sure. Nap time uh, away from uh, away from Britain in Ireland. Two forty six at Navan. Uh, you may have also called Eric Bloodaxe. Yes, aren't you? Very very smart bumper horse a couple of seasons ago. Giggins uh, down. He's joined Gordon Elliott quite recently. He won on his stable debut pretty comfortably at Fairy House, uh, being a decent novice called Captain Combi who ran in a Grade One before that. Uh, he's back in a handicap now, five hundred thirty seven, back over three miles. Um, yeah, I think he's well treated. I mean. He won a Grade Two Novice Odor at Limerick over, on his first try at three really easily over Christmas last year, but I think that might have taken a bit out of him on heavy ground because he only ran in Grade Ones at Leopardstown and then in the Albert Bartlett and didn't run up to expectations. But he's obviously back to himself. He's back with Cornelia. I think he's better than 137. Uh, it's a pretty deep race, but I think it'll be a double-figure price. He is on the SP 
forecast tissue we've done. So, uh, yeah, Eric Bloodaxe for me. All right, love that. Yeah, not often you get to back that horse at that sort of price, is it? I think Nigel Tristan Davis will have a double because the 225, I think, will go to the way of I like to move it. But at three o'clock, I think I'm going to go with this for the nap. It could have been Frero Bamboo. It could have been I like to move it. But I'm going to put We've All Been Caught. Brilliantly named horse. Uh, Hermes Allen form on the table here. Over two mile five last time. Watch back that finish in your members club. Two mile seven. I don't think Outlaw Pete is one of the best novices Nichols has ever had. The joints at the moment. Six to four with bet three, six five. I think he will beat him off. We've all been caught. You have, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're coming up to that festive time of year. I hope you're feeling festive out there. I hope you've got the fires on, and I truly hope that racing continues to stoke them for you this weekend. Sadly, that's all we've got time for on this edition of What to Shout for myself, Dave Orden. It's been an absolute pleasure having Pat Cooney with us again. A round of applause earlier, Pat. That's the first time that's ever happened. Well, yes, very generous. I have no speech prepared, unfortunately, but um, hopefully I'll uh, survive Doncaster on Saturday. I'm going to be wrapped up very, very warm. And uh, in the studio for next Thursday, all being well. Yes, happy days. Yeah, we're going to try and beat uh, the train strikes next week. We're getting packed down into the studio. Wilders, great to have you with us, old man. Great to be back, mate. Yeah. Um, just, just want viewers to be made aware. Uh, if you think Dave's got an ego, yeah, I can confirm he does because he dubbed himself Racing's version of Michael Buffer earlier. <laughs> so with all the big calls, yeah, yeah I'm going to trademark it. So. <laughs> Let's get after it. I'm going around saying it myself. So oh, there we go. Absolutely. Well, look, look. Me and Robbie have a bit of a teasing uh, relationship, but you should see it in the office. It gets lively. Good to have you. Mm. Look, I like this new quarter zip. Yeah, I mean, I'm on, I'm on live tomorrow. Do I, do I wear another quarter? You made a rod like for a... your own back here because you're going to have yeah, to go I've and set the bar you know... too high. I mean, I'm feeling the t-shirt potentially tomorrow, but I'm thinking England, England t-shirt maybe. Oh, nice. Yes, of I course. don't have a collared one. I've got a yeah, yeah, big I think game tomorrow. Night. On it. Yeah, England win tomorrow. Uh, oh, penalties. England win. England win on penalties. <laughs> England win or penalties, One you heard all. it here. Find yeah. that price on Bet365. There's bound to be a market out there. All right, great stuff. Don't forget, gamble responsibly this weekend, guys. That's what it's all about here at the Racing Post and Bet365. Of course, don't forget to download that app. It is free, and it's on the Google Play Store and the App Store itself. So let's hope there's loads of sport out there for you to enjoy.